questions. This is a great story. Bharti Airtel is actually going to create some call centers in Africa. They already have a presence in uh, 19 countries and 183 million customers across those 19 countries. But Bharti Airtel announced in June it would invest $600 million in Nigeria's mobile phone market. The reason for this is because Bharti Airtel believes that Africa will revolutionize in the next decade and they want to be there poised at the beginning of that upsurge. And by putting call centers there, it's their first way to make that presence felt. But isn't that interesting that, you know, for for all of us as Indians, we just never thought of the the outsourcing chain going the other way. But you're going to soon see these call centers emerge in Nigeria as well as Uganda, Zambia, Madagascar. I mean, the list goes on and on. This could be quite revolutionary. You know, it could be. And I think it makes a lot of sense that Indian companies are thinking ahead, not assuming that things are going to stay the way that they are, but looking forward to see who's emerging now, right, and uh, what countries they want to lay that foundation so that those partnerships are strong for the future business that is coming. The other thing we don't often realize is that India has had a strong migration pattern with Africa for years, for decades. Mm -hmm. In fact, it is much longer than the migration path has been to the United States or even to Europe. We have been in Africa for centuries. Well, wherever the British Raj went, they took their Indians right. with them. <laughs> and so that's why you see Indians all over the world. We all know that there's been a big health push, particularly from the Obama administration. Michelle Obama has been talking about healthier meals at restaurants and healthy meals for children. But did you know the very same department of the U.S. government, the Department of Agriculture, that's promoting all this health and nutrition information, is also supporting the influence of cheese throughout our food system. <laughs> there is a part, of, there's a particular agency called Dairy Management, okay, that gets some money from the Department of Agriculture and some money from the dairy industry that is actively promoting the use of cheese, vast increases in the amounts of cheese being used by restaurants. Let me give you one example. Last year, Domino's was falling, and they were really not doing well in their taste tests, and their sales were going down. Well, help arrived from the dairy management organization, and they developed pizzas that have 40% more cheese. This worked. They, the consumers devoured the pizzas. Sales soared by double digits. But guess what? One slice contains as much as two-thirds of a day's maximum recommended amount of saturated fat. One slice of this pizza that has 40% more fat than it used to. I mean, I was absolutely appalled at some of these numbers. And the fact that we're consuming more cheese is, is significant. Americans now eat an average of 33 pounds of cheese a year, nearly triple the 1970 rate. So we've got the Department of Agriculture putting us in a very difficult position because they are both involved in marketing agricultural products, in this case dairy through cheese, and responsible for policing America's nutrition. And that contradiction I don't think is serving American consumers very well. Well, the problem is the consumer is not well-educated, and they're not paying attention to what they're eating. Uh, we talk about this frequently on the show, that, you know, the economic condition we're in fosters us to eat a certain way. And most of us are eating fast food restaurants. We're eating pre-packaged processed foods. And cheese is a staple ingredient in all of them. The cheese is being processed in these dairy farms. You don't exactly know what's going in them. But here's the appalling thing. It has high fat content. I mean, for all of its nutritional value in terms of calcium or even the small amount of protein the it offers. Biggest source of saturated fat. Exactly. So I, I think until the American consumer becomes a smarter, savvier uh, consumer, we're not going to get off our cheese but, but diet. But see, Asa, that's my point. The government agency that's responsible for educating the American <laughs> consumer about nutrition is the same agency funding the increase of these products in our restaurants and in the food industry. So that's the contradiction. I don't think we can just blame the consumer when, in fact, our government is promoting this. To add to your point, Chilpa, this will probably make you more angry, too. <laughs> Did you know that advertising directly has increased by fast food restaurants to young children? This is appalling. Preschoolers in 2009 saw a 21% increase in the ads, the amount of ads by McDonald's, 9% more ads for Burger King, and 56% more ads for Subway than they did in 2007. Wow. So we're actively marketing to the young kids here. Not only that, McDonald's has 13 different websites, including one 
aimed at very young children. We're talking 2 to 11. Wow. So you can talk about you know these websites and the type of commercials actually angling at those kids because the kids will ask their parents to take them there. And consequently, uh, when the kids do go there, this is probably the most appalling part. You know, fast food restaurants have actually started offering healthier options. Mm -hmm. The problem is they're not the default options. The default option is still french fries. You have to especially ask to get the special apple slices or the salads. If we could just change our default behavior, We'd actually help ourselves a lot more. Well, maybe we'll all go the way of San Francisco, which has said now to fast food restaurants, you cannot give away toys with meals for children unless your meals meet certain nutritional content guidelines. And you know a lot of these fast food restaurants don't. So who knows? Maybe that'll start a trend to really hold the restaurants accountable. I sure hope so. You know, folks, this is not just an American problem. This is also happening on the Indian front. I read a very scary story out of Bloomberg about how diabetes is just exploding in India. And we're not talking about the elder generation. We're talking about people who are in their midlife, people 40 and above, who are picking up diabetes uh, in droves. And the reason for it is, you know, we have had a rapid change in our lifestyle in India, at least the ones that are in that middle class who often grew up with very meager circumstances, who didn't have a lot of money, who ate a certain kind of vegetarian diet. Now that they are in this growing middle class, they're eating more fast food, they're eating out more, they're cooking less at home, there's less fresh produce. Consequently, diabetes is absolutely exploding. In October 2009, India ranked as the country with the most diabetics worldwide. Wow, that's incredible. The umbrella group of more than 200 national associations estimates that the disease will kill about 1 million Indians this year, more than in any other country. And it has to do with the fact that we are just simply also not living lives the way we're used to living them in India. And people used to walk in India. They used to use public transportation. And there really wasn't the option to ride around in your car because cars were expensive. Nobody bought them. That is changing. TVs and computers, technology, cell phones have made people in India much more sedentary than they ever have been. And consequently, this first generation that is in that bracket to embrace these new changes are picking up the diseases as well. Well, the thing is, I don't think we appreciate how much our traditional diet and habits really help us until we shift away from that and then we see the consequences, right? These are the unanticipated consequences of growth and development in the middle class, as you were just talking about. This is modernization, but there's a downside, and we're seeing that in our health. Uh, it's really quite disturbing. Yeah, just to give you one example, diabetes.